Hi guys, welcome back to this Model Engineers workshop. Today in the workshop, it's going to be really interesting. In fact, it's going to be riveting. Hi guys, I'm the chef. Today, as I just said, we're going to be drilling some holes and doing a lot of riveting. So here I've got the first of the two uh, angle irons in the vise that uh, hold the pump stay in the middle of the locomotive. There's the second one with the whole pattern already drilled in it for the bolts that hold it to the frames. In this face, they'll be going the holes for the rivets that hold it to the pump stay itself. So this is set up in the vise, done the zeros as usual from the corner of the vise. So by default, the corner of the vise there is zero, zero, and by default, the corner of the angle line is there. You've got the trusty little drawing by my side, all the dimensions worked out. So it's now a case of drilling two rows of four into this, to do the same again with that one, two rows of four. Then I've still got to uh, do the angles for the rear buffer beam and the front buffer beam. And then we can get onto some riveting. I think it's a total of 52 holes and 52 rivets, of course. Right up guys, well if you've seen me you've seen me drilling holes before, so I'm not gonna bother drilling holes while the camera's on. So I'm gonna go off camera, get all the holes drilled, and I'll get back to you when it's time to do the rivets. Alright guys, see you soon. Hi guys, back again. So that's 52 holes drilled. Can't resist the temptation, this is great fun. Just very temporarily put together. As you can see, we've got a few rivets. Oh, that one just popped out a little bit. There we go. So uh, uh, just got a few rivets in each joint. Oh, that one's got a full joint, but a couple of bolts just hold everything together. So now you can see the frames to get all together with the buffer beams in the right place. The last time you saw this, they were just resting on the resting on the bench, just resting here and at the other end. So that's fifty-two holes. Didn't take too long, really. Just a case of being a bit careful with the. DRO on the mill, make sure everything was in the right places before you start drilling, locking down the table when needed. Now, one thing I did notice, guys, and I've done a little piece for, it's going to come after this. The next segment is going to be this one, the uh, one I'm talking about. Uh, I noticed that a lot of swarf was flying around. Now, I've done a bit of slow-mo, first time ever, so this will be going to be interesting. Just so you can see how far this swarf is flying when just drilling a simple hole. So, if you're doing this at home, guys, whether it's your own locomotive or you're building a wombat, doesn't matter, or you're just building anything, please, 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 health safety uh, warning, please at least wear goggles, uh, safety specs, whatever you want to call them, or a face mask. Right, guys, I'm going to just put that piece in here now. You can skip it if you want. It's only about a minute and seven or eight seconds. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. I reckon you should watch it. It could be quite enlightening for all of us. We know the swarf flies, but just to see it go in, in slow motion is actually quite interesting. Right, guys, I'm going to get these taken apart and set up for riveting. Now, that's what I said at the beginning. It's going to be riveting. Well, 52 rivets to go. I've got a bit of the shakes today, haven't I? Sorry about that. Uh, right, so take this apart, get the receptor for riveting, and I'll bring you back. Thanks a lot, guys.
Right I guys, back again, stripped the chassis down, cleared the bench a little bit. So as you can see, here's one of the uh, pump stay brackets. Nice and all drilled and tapped and everything ready to go. I've got the first one on the pump stay. Eight holes to rivet. Got seven bolts in there with nuts. That's just to make sure that while I'm riveting, nothing moves and I'll take those out one at a time. Put those in nice and easy, used my little spanner set from a previous video. So easy peasy, now I'm going to get this uh, into my homemade rivet press. Uh, go back to video number 12 if you want a quick description on that. Nice and easy this thing, didn't take long to make, but it does a damn good job, or it did on the uh, tender anyway. I haven't used it since then, so it's up, but it's all the same, nothing's moved by the look of things. Welding's still crappy. It was crappy back then and it's crappy now. Right, so I'm going to put you down and get, well, I'm not actually going to put you down. I'll get you onto the tripod and then I'm going to get you in as close as I can and as low as I can so you can actually see the rivet press working. I'm going to be do, using my 24 inch breaker bar on that big bugger there. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to see this thing actually compressing the iron rivets of which I've got here. I've got a few bagfuls of them. These are 3 16 by 3 quarter uh, rivets. This is what the drawing calls for. You could imagine that why don't we uh, just bolt everything together. Well, I suppose if you've got the right bolt and the right fit, you probably could, but the drawing calls for rivets, so I'm going to do rivets. Right, guys, I'm going to get you onto the tripod to get you down and in position so you can see what's going on. Okay, back in a second. Righto guys, so that's it set up. Here you can see the pump stay, here's the angle just in there. You can possibly just still make out that the rivet is the anvil with a dimple in it. This is the big 20mm bolt that I used. That's also got a dimple in it and it was a dog bolt, so a dog shape bolt, I think they're called, just so I didn't have to turn that down. Now up here, let me just see if I can position you again. Yep, there's my breaker bar. I'm not going to show you me, me swinging that around, but I'll just leave this here. Now, if I can remember correctly from doing the tender. There we go. Took about two and a half full turns, two and a quarter. So it doesn't really take long and it doesn't take a lot of effort. So I wish I could get a bit more. I wonder. Just give me a second. I wonder what I can use. Let's see if I can just put a bit of paper behind that. Excuse the noise. There we go. Maybe that'll work a little bit just so I can. Yes, that's perfect. Now, you, now, so in here, there's the rivet. I've put a little bit of blue, oh, there's some on my finger, blue lithium high pressure grease on the in, inside of the dimple here. Not on this one because this one needs to stay still. This is the one that this is rotating, so it's going to kind of, as it screws down, you don't really want to be twisting the rivet, you want to be compressing it. Right, so here goes. This is turn number one. Man, that proving tight this time. Are we down yet? No, we're not. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> no, it's moving. Oh, I see what I've got done wrong. Okay. Let's try that again. What's happened? I don't know if you notice, and you can't see it, but if I just pan you back a bit, the bolt head, you can see that this bolt is too far down. So I'm just going to quickly reset. Let's wind that back up a bit. Thought it was hard going. You can see how, how adjustable this is. There we go. Put a piece of paper back in there. Yep. Let me just raise you up a little bit. 
Well, that was a classic mistake, wasn't it? Didn't even think of that. And back down a bit more. There we go. Right, that looks better. Now, let's try that again, shall we? So, here we go. There we go. That's about two turns. Yeah, about two and a quarter. Just loosen that off. Take off the breaker bar. Take out that so it doesn't drop. Lift this out. Yeah. Yeah, let me just wipe that off. There we go. One nicely formed rivet head. That one is in and it ain't going anywhere. That's as tight as it will go. Yep, yep, that rivet head's all the way down. There we go. Right. Won't show you doing all eight of those because that is going to be boring. So at this moment in time, I'll stop the video, get the others in, and I'll bring you back when I'm done. Righto guys, so that's me back again. As you can see, that's the first eight rivets in. That's the manufactured head. That's the rivet press head. I know in video 12, I went on about a little bit about the uh, other forms of riveting. Other form, it's basically take a big hammer to it and hit it and use rivet snaps and things. But in that video, I actually pointed out that this workshop that I'm in is relatively in the middle of the house. That's the way we designed it. In fact, literally behind that wall is the kitchen. So I'm not going to be upsetting the household authorities. I had to find a different way. A bit of research soon came up with the idea for rivet presses. Didn't take much to actually come up with the design. I basically took somebody else's design and used it to the materials I could get. This was a scrapyard find, a couple of couple of nuts, a couple of big, a big bolt, M20, bit of M20 old thread. Machine it, dimple in here, dimple in there. Easy as, nice and quiet. Those seven rivets, not the one you watch, but the other seven. Uh, that took 13 minutes and that included taking out a bolt at a time, putting the rivet in, putting it in the rivet press, greasing the top of the rivet, greasing the upper dimple. Like I said, this one doesn't, it really needs to stay still. Uh, no grease in this one at all. Grease in that one, the lithium, the blue lithium grease which I've got in there, and a, a, an artist brush which I nicked off the missus. And uh, yeah, it's about two and a quarter turns. No great stress, no great pressure. Just don't kind of do it with your arms. It's a case of the la last quarter turn is the hardest, and you really just need to get kind of straight arms, lean back, and use your body weight on it. And it's dead easy. They've gone down nice and tight. They look good, nice and tidy. Come on, focus. Thank you. So that's it for this little sec segment. I'll get all the others done. What is it now? 40, 44 to go. Another five brackets, angles. There's one there, and I've got the other four over here on the bench, just ready waiting. And uh, then I'll get a couple of temporary bolts into each one and get the frames put back together, and we can have a proper look like look at what it's going to look like when it's all bolted up. Next stage after that, we'll be getting all the, a few more bits and pieces on, and then it, off it goes to the grit, grit blasters. My teeth aren't working, and it'll come back in a lovely shade of dark grey primer. All right, guys, going to stop it there for now, and I'll see you back in a minute. Well, in a couple of seconds for you guys. It might be a couple of hours for me. Just get these rivets in, and uh, I'll see you in a bit. Righto guys, back again. So there we go. That's all the rivets in. 52 of them. Only took just under two hours to put them in. No great sweat or effort involved with the rivet press. Very efficient. 
Uh, as you can see, they look really pretty. They've come up really, really nice. These are the manufactured heads, of course. That's the rivet press heads. But you get, you're given a choice of two, either a good side or a less good side. So you always put the good side on the outside, don't you? Right, so a few things to do before I do a test run back to putting the frames together. These four holes need to be tapped. I believe they're M6. These two and those two also need to be tapped, but I believe they're M8. So I'll check that out on the drones and I will get back to you once I've got that done and the frames are put together and I'll give you a full length shot of that. And that will bring this video to a close for this week. Righto guys, I'll be back again in a few minutes. Just give me, just hang on. Righto guys, back again. Didn't take too long. Managed to tap the holes. You're in here, M8, both front and back. The, the pumps stay here. These holes are clearance M5, so I didn't actually have to tap those in the end, which was good. Didn't make it a great deal. Four little tap, tapped holes wouldn't take up a lot of time. There it is, guys. There's the loco frames. They're all together, just temporarily. They've got to be stripped apart, and then I'll go off to the grip blaster and get them painted sometime. Got a few things to add to them in the next uh, video, probably, or the next couple of videos. A uh, bit of uh, loco frame furniture, I suppose, is the best word. Got four of these spring blocks to put on. Four springs in each. They've been made a while now. I've just been waiting to drill and tap the holes, and then they can be mounted up. Yeah, you know, we've got a little sub assembly just to put put together, just to have a look, see what it looked like. Two horn cheeks and the keeper plate. The keeper plate locates into little slots there and there, because of course this depth has been reduced to this depth, and it's just to stop the frames splaying through time. Not that I think they would. Six mil steel, and that's what 50, 60, 65, 70 thick. It might flex a little bit, I suppose, with the power of the loco. It might start to wreck backwards and forwards a little bit, but uh, they're going in. They're on the drone. Uh, I have found one mistake, which got duplicated because of the two side frames, but I'll go into that in the next video or the next one or the one after that, as I say, but I'm not going to tell you what it is just yet. Maybe some of you might be able to work it out. I'll just pan along the frames so you can see the whole thing there. Resting on the top of it there, I have a meter rule and we get to the end and it's telling me 92.6 926 millimeters long some of the furniture are the couplings that go on each one and go on each end that's what the m8 holes are for again crappy welding i'm not a welder i'm a chef yep bubble gum i'm gonna have to get back onto that and get a bit more practice done then it'll get quite easy that was tig welded uh, so there's very few, there's very little smoke and sparks from that because, as I say, this workshop's in the middle of the house. Right, so guys, that's the end of this video for this time. One more little pan along. The locomotive is started. Righto, guys, this is the chef signing out for today, and I'll be in the next one if you can. Find it in yourself. If you aren't already subscribed, please like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Bye now.